Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and you may not know it, but this week is the worst week for me every year in college football. And the reason for that is that my wife's dad played football at Mississippi State. I went to Auburn, and so on this week every year, especially if Auburn wins, my wife literally kind of gets mad at me, even if I don't say anything. It's almost like it's an, they assume that I have a smirk on my face or something because Auburn won the game. And I'll tell you a brief story. My mother-in-law has never, ever been anything but nice to me the entire time when I was dating my wife, and including um, since we've been married. My mother-in-law has always been extremely nice to me and has never... Uh, been ugly to me in any kind of way. But there was this one time where I, this is when I learned how serious this whole Mississippi State thing was. Uh, her parents, took my wife's parents took me with them to a Mississippi State Auburn game in Starkville, Mississippi. And I will never forget it. Um, it, it was a year, I don't remember the exact year, but it was a year that Mississippi State was pretty good. And they ended up, I think they ended up beating Auburn. And I'll never forget it. Um, Mississippi State had gone down and scored. And my mother, my future at the time, mother-in-law, turned to me with the biggest eat-you-know-what smirk on her face. And it was then that I realized that that was just one line that I could never cross was the Mississippi State line. And they do not like Auburn. <laughs> I've grown up in a, or grown up. My house, it lays out like this. My father went to Georgia Tech. My wife's dad played at Mississippi State. My wife went to Georgia, and I went to Auburn. And I've learned that both Georgia and Mississippi State fans hate Auburn. And I do mean hate. Okay, enough of that. So I don't ever cross my mother-in-law in any way when it comes to Mississippi State or my wife. Let's start this out. Um, this was such a great painting that I wanted to show it to you. Um, this is from uh, Goop at xrp.com. And he's got his his, uh, his uh, email in here. This guy's been the one that's been putting out all the great art. He did um, he did David Schwartz, I think, Brad Garlinghouse. Well, he did Jungle Inc. And many of you know, Jungle Inc. is one of the YouTubers that um, inspired me to do my YouTube channel. So he did this Jungle Inc. Um, painting today, I guess. And one day I, I was thinking about it. And one day I think I'm going to send um, uh, Goop a side profile picture of me. <laughs> Maybe where you can't really see my face, but some kind of side profile picture and get him to paint that. That'll, that'll get people talking, I imagine. Um, but anyway, this is a great picture of Jungle Inc. Um, that, uh, I mean, the guy really does a good job. Um, it's amazing how many really talented people, um, I can't tell you the times in this XRP community that I feel like I don't have any skill and I feel like, um, um, there are so many people that are so much smarter than some of us. I, I'm just blown away every day by it. And I sh usually in my videos, you are, I am showing you like, for instance, David Schwartz, when I'm reading some of the things he says, I literally sometimes am feeling stupid as I read them. <laughs> so, but this world, it takes all kinds to make the world go around, doesn't it? And that's what's so great about the whole thing is that we're all coming from different life experiences and we've all kind of come together in this thing. And it's really amazing how all this has unfolded. All right. Um, let's move along here. Um, this is from uh, XRP Research Center. This is a quote that has come out of the Cybos over there to Cybos, which is going on in, in London, I believe. There's about, this is from Navin Gupta. There's about five to 10 trillion that is stuck in pre-funded accounts around the world. If this five to 10 trillion were to be redeployed back into the home economies, can you imagine what effect it can have 
When we speak to central banks, they love it. You're darn right they love it. I think they might love some pre-allocation theory XRP too. Brad Combs. Um, Mr. B, XRP, at XRP, Mr. And by the way, um, I, I, before I forget, um, I'm working with Brad Combs. For those of you that don't watch, Brad Combs um, has a YouTube channel where he does a live stream in the morning and a live stream at night. I have not really done many collaborations of any kind, but I am doing something with Brad Combs that uh, we will be talking about over the next few weeks. Um, uh, kind of, I guess you'd call it a collaboration, not maybe kind of sort of. But anyway, Brad, I've kind of gotten to know, and he's a very smart guy, and I, I like the way he does interviews and does live streams. And so that'll come down the road here pretty soon, actually. XRP Mr. Uh, Mr. B sent me this. Um, and this is a tweet from Zero uh, Head, or from this guy, but it's a Zero Hedge article. Second term repo over, oversubscribed as funding shortage keeps getting worse and nobody knows why. Well, nobody except Cryptopolis might know why. This was a tweet from Cryptopolis today. And he says 7,282 store closures in 2019. Think of the impact on banks. Banks not meeting their reserve requirements due uh, to loan defaults and reduced daily deposits from these stores is now a reality. No wonder the overnight lending rate hit 10%. They are short cash. And he, he's tweeting out this article, U.S. Retail Bankruptcy Store Closures 2019. Look at all these names here, folks. Pay less, 2,354 stores. Look at all of the names of these stores. Jimboree, I'll just Family Dollar, Walgreens, Gap, GNC. These are just some of the names I recognize. Fred's. Um, just to tell you a story about Fred's, what, before, what, what I love about children is before your children get to a certain age, when they're, when they're young, they don't know what things cost and they don't know about brands. And it's so great before your children get into their teeny bopper at years where their friend, there's like peer pressure and, and brands matter at, that you, then you have to start buying more expensive things. What I used to do when my son, and I tell him this to this day, I used to go to Fred's because Fred's had the cheap toys. When my son was little and he didn't know the difference, um, instead of getting real Legos, he might get some generic brand Legos that I would get from Fred's. I would take him to Fred's and he, he didn't know the difference because he's a little kid. Brands didn't matter at the time. He just knew that he was able to go and buy some toys. And so I joke with him now about how I used to go get him those cheap crap toys over at, over at Fred's. So anyway, um, why spend the money if the kid doesn't even know the difference, right? So uh, Depths Capital at Depths Capital, big deal. This is the CEO of the largest bank in Southeast Asia with $400 billion in total assets. This is a tweet from Ripple. They've been announcing some of these people that are going to be speaking at Swell in Singapore. Piyush Gupta, CEO of DBS Group. We keep seeing Ripple floating out these announcements of these different important bankers and central bankers coming out. Of, some of them, I believe, are out of India. And I'm not sure. Let's see if it says. Um, it probably says in the article. It doesn't matter. The point is, more and more huge, important people that are connected, that are, that are speaking for Ripple, and they're, they're doing deals with central banks, banks. I mean, it just keeps going. Um, Michelle Vandenberg, at Michelle Vandenberg, sent me this. Now, if you've never seen this, um, or if you've never heard of this, um, it's interesting, and I thought this was interesting enough to show you. Um, this is just a, I don't even know who this person is, but this is a tweet that was sent out. It says, so they own the world. Now, I didn't know, when I first looked at this, I didn't know what they were talking about. So I blew it up. Now, for those of you that don't know, the Bilderberg, the Bilderberg group is this group that goes back for a long time. Um, and it, and it's a group of, it's a group that meets in secret. Um, that now they, before it was really secret. Now they at least they tell where it's going to be and all that. But the agenda is always secret, and it's some of the most powerful people in the world. And there are all kinds of conspiracy theories that go around this. 
But this graphic is the first time I've seen something like this. It shows you this graphic, shows Bilderberg Group in the middle, but then it shows you names and it shows you how those names are connected to various companies, organizations, governments, powerful, you know, organizations. And basically, um, they're saying it, they own the world. Now, something that's a little more disturbing, the way I understand it is, um, at least in the United States, our U.S. government officials are not, um, it's, it is literally illegal for people like Timothy Geithner to go and plan and plot with other governments or other entities um, without having the approval of the U.S. government of in some kind of way or, or it being very transparent. And so there's always been a certain group that talks about how shady it is that these U.S. government officials are going and doing this type of thing. I don't know how they get around that. But that is a, a, a topic of discussion. All right, Michael at VAL5 links. And crypto is bad, not so fast, my friend. German authorities have raided the Frankfurt headquarters of Deutsche Bank for information pertaining to the 2018 Dansky Bank money laundering scandal. Meanwhile, last week we were talking about how JP Morgan has been price fixing in the precious metals market. Nobody ever goes to jail. We always hear about this. If anybody does go to jail, it's always some lackey that some no name or they never, we never hear anything more about it. But Bitcoin's the scam, right? And digital assets, they're the scam, right? Chinu Patel at Chinu Patel 29 sent me this. This is an interesting tweet thread. 20 years of central bank gold agreement comes to an end today. And this is a tweet from today. Today marks the end of the final central bank gold agreement. Over the last 20 years, the agreement has helped stabilize the gold market by limiting the amount of gold that signatories all European banks could collectively sell in any one year. But the gold market has changed drastically over the last two decades. Sources of demand are more diverse than they were in 1999. The price is significantly lower. Central banks were uncoordinated net sellers at the time prompting the CBGA. Um, central banks behavior with respect to gold fundamentally shifted following the global financial crisis in 2009. Since 2010, they have been net purchasers, purchasers on an annual basis averaging 480 trillion per year between 2010 and 2018. And do you know what else has been going on? Is the over the counter crypto sales has, have been going through the roof for the last year or two. Now, that should be very telling to you because the wealthy in secret have been behind the scenes buying gold and precious metals and crypto. That should tell you really everything you need to know about where you sit. I don't care if the market went down this week or up this week. All that doesn't matter. What matters is what the wealthy and institutions have been doing behind the scenes for the last 10 years. What matters is what they're doing, not what you're seeing. Once you, once you recognize that, you'll be a lot more comfortable with what, what's going on here. X-Men XRP at XRP33 sent an interesting article to me. XUBS head wants his crypto bank to tap 220 billion cryptocurrency market. Peter Wolfley, the former CEO of Switzerland's largest, largest bank, UBS, and director at Swiss crypto bank Singham, Singham, wants to tap the $220 billion, uh, market for institutions and private individuals who already own cryptocurrencies. Um, and then this is what he, uh, what he said in an interview. The most immediate opportunity is the existing $220 billion market of institutions and private individuals who already own cryptocurrencies. Thousands of clients have contacted us for a one-stop shop for asset custody loans and trading cryptocurrencies seamlessly with fiat currencies. See what I'm saying, folks? I mean, it's all happening. You just need to, if you're really paying attention, you'd be extremely comfortable right now with where you sit. Okay, now this was an interesting David Schwartz thread. The, um, every once in a while I see him come in and he starts making comments. And I like to read them to you to, so that you know what's going on. This guy knows what he's talking about. I do think stable coins and cryptocurrencies will compete for market share and use case fit over the next few years. I'm not particularly worried about gaining or losing market share if the whole market is rapidly growing. 
Twitter can only succeed if it has a market of people who have home internet access and phones capable of accessing Twitter. Twitter can't build that just for Twitter. Other successful use cases and assets will build the market. Things like XRP need to succeed. Also, there are lots of bad ideas in the space, but that's the, an but that's the answer to most how do you feel about potential com competitor X questions. If that works better than XRP for some customers and use cases, they shouldn't suffer an inferior, inferior result. Get the best outcomes so you stay in. And finally, I wanted to show you this tweet. This is a good one. Billionaire Mindset. Name a book that changed your life. Comment below. The reason I wanted to show you this is that I this is how I live my life. Um, you Every day, the, the way I look at, at life, every day, you have a choice. If you just roll out of bed in the morning and you wake up and you just start your day, you're starting your day in neutral. And I believe that that the way life works and the way the media works, it's much easier for you, if you don't do anything about it, to start your day in a negative emotion versus a positive emotion. And I think most people just roll out of bed and their day, whatever hits them is how their day unfolds. And, and their emotion and the way they see things is dictated by what happens to them. So the way I do things is I, I read and listen to positive things when I wake up and throughout my day. And, and I, that's how I conduct my day. I tell my son all the time, especially when, when he experiences bad things, whether it's in school or baseball, I make him read positive things and watch positive videos and listen to positive things because that is how, that, that is how you proceed with the right kind of attitude, the, atti the attitude towards life that it's going to, it's going to give you the things that you need to progress in a positive way and to build your life in a positive way and for good things to happen to you. And I do believe there's not a part of me because I'm living proof, folks. There's not a part of me that does not believe that what you put out is what you get in return. That is that. And you young people that are listening to me, write down what I just said. Your life is a direct reflection of what you put out. If you put out poison, I can promise you that poison will come back to you tenfold. If you put out positive vibes and you put out um, the kind of the kind of thoughts and vibes that will bring you positive things, you will get them. I've gotten them. Trust me on that. And don't just listen to me saying that. Go out and listen to the positive things. Go look at this guy's list of books. This is one of the books that influenced me. Um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Go read it. Read these books from smart people and positive people who, who say yes to life and not, eh, maybe those people won't do anything for you. The people that are out there who have done it and who have succeeded, read what that they write. Don't read what the losers write. Um, uh, and so, and I'm not going to give any examples of the losers, but I'm just saying, you read what the successful people in life have done. And I will tell you to a man, if you read anything from successful people, those are the positive people. They are the ones that say that life is going to bring you more good than bad if you approach it the right way. Every one of them that I've ever studied and read about, that is their approach. So go out there and read things like Think and Grow Rich. Start your day by reading those type of things and positive passages from books like that. These are the things that will inspire you to, to better your life. Okay. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that every day, your every day, if you'll start it on a positive footing. It will change your whole thought pattern in the way that your life unfolds. There's not a question in the world about this. I have, I literally watched my entire life. There, there are people that you will meet in your life and it's not a coincidence. They go from one success to another. These are the people, these are the people that, that all of the, all of the, um, 
there are a lot of people that stand on the sidelines and they point at other people their entire life and they criticize those people. And when those people ultimately find success because they never give up and they have a, they have a, a, a trudge forward attitude towards life, there are always going to be people who stand on the sidelines and point at them and resent them. And those are the losers, folks, <laughs> as Trump says. <laughs> Those are the those are the losers, and I'm not making. Don't get me wrong, I'm not making a political statement here. The people that sat, stand on the sidelines and spend all their time criticizing those that are moving and shaking, that ain't the pattern that you want to follow. Trust me when I say that. I watched my father my entire life. My father was one of those people from the age of 12 that was working, and he went from one success to to the next, and it's because of an attitude that he took towards life. Everything that he ever looked at, he looked at it as, I can do that. I can do that better than they're doing that. I'll do it and here's how I'm gonna do it. And he never looked at things of, oh, I can't do that. Uh, you know, so-and-so couldn't do it and so I couldn't do it. He, he never thought about things that way. And for that reason, he succeeded and continues to, su to succeed. And that does not mean, by the way, you young people out there, it does not mean that you are not going to fail. You are going to fail. Failure is going to help you if you maintain that attitude towards life. Because failure is a natural part of thing and, and things, and it won't always be your fault. But bad things happen to good, ha bad things happen to good people. And always remember that. You can be affected by all sorts of things that, that are not your fault, but that's irrelevant. What's relevant is how you approach getting back on the horse and, and the attitude that you approach it with. Thanks for listening.